Hi, I'm Kent. We're working on a mold deep dive where the eventual goal is to have a piece of software that lets us go ahead and automatically create plaster molds for slip casting for us. Over the past few videos, we've been making some progress. We started 3D printing some molds. So these are basically designed from a sketch defining the outside contour of the pot, and then the software does everything else. It goes ahead and scales up the pot, accounting for clay shrinkage, it adds a slip well. That's this one here and it created this mold here. The next step was to go ahead and create the outer mold for the plaster as well. So we have this form here and this form here. This is the last video. That then creates these outer molds here, which lets us cast plaster like that. And here are the associated bone dry pots. So this was similar to the previous video. However, the thing that we changed is the outer mold. Instead of pouring the plaster in a bucket or some cotto boards, we went ahead and 3D printed the outer mold as well. So you'll notice that the contour of the plaster more or less mimics the contour of the inner mold. And we did that by 3D printing this outer shell. So now we have a few pieces. We have the inner mold. This forms the shape of the pot. We have an outer mold to contain the plaster. And we have this ring here to join them together. So basically the way this worked is this one got attached down there. The outer mold got attached, we poured in plaster, we then demolded everything, pulled off the outer, put out the inner, and that gave us this mold here exactly. So the plaster was poured this way so all the bubbles would raise to the surface, away from the surface of the pot, if we had any. And then of course it slip cast this way. So this is great, but there's a few things I already know I want to improve. First, we're running up against the size of my 3D printer's volume. So to create a cup that's this big, the outer plaster mold needs to be this big. And so we actually grow a lot. This is the clay shrinkage plus the space we need for the plaster. That's why it gets so big so fast. And if you're watching my last video, you'll notice that I printed these rings here that wind up sealing it in two pieces. I see I glued this together, but that was because it wasn't fitting on my print bed. I thought I had got it just small enough to fit. Apparently it was just a tiny bit too big. So one of the obvious next steps is to go ahead and split the outer mold into multiple pieces just like I did the ring. So by splitting this in pieces, we solved a couple of problems all at once. We get around the build volume issue and we get around the demolding of the outer mold issue. So that's something I definitely wanna do. This doesn't let us completely get around build volume issues. The inner mold would still be subject to a build volume. However, this is a fair bit smaller than this. So we can actually scale the pots up a fair bit still before worrying about having to split this piece up at least from a build volume perspective. The next issue I need to deal with is attachment. So now I have three pieces for the plaster mold. I have the inner here, the ring, and the outer. And these all need to be attached together well enough that they hold back plaster when it's wet, yet also need to be removable so that I can demold the plaster piece. Plus, the plaster needs to come out from this side, so I need to pop off the ring, pull out the inner, and pull off the outer. So this ring is designed to have a little bit of extra tolerance in it, so it's slightly bigger than the diameters that I need on the outside and slightly smaller on the inside, so these can slip over. And there wasn't quite enough room. I wanna make that a little bit bigger if I keep this design. I then attach these together with sticky wax. So here's some sticky wax. I've seen this used in some other model making videos, and basically the idea was to go ahead and melt it in the slight gap between these two. It takes a little bit of practice, and I'm not too sure I have exactly that down yet. But I did wind up with a little bit of leaking plaster, and it could be that I didn't have the wax down just right. I might have also been that I didn't have the gap quite big enough, so there was enough space for the wax. And potentially this little lip here, and the attachment point needs to be a little bit taller. And then the other issue was I had designed this so that I could flow wax down the outside. However, on the inside, that's impossible. So it's really hard to get up and around inside this lip to be able to secure it. So I wound up flowing the wax around this side here, which worked okay, but it did mess up the top of my mold. This part is really just structural, it's non-functional, but it would be nice to make that nicer. So the other change I would want to make if I keep this design is I would want to rethink the geometry here so that I can attach it this way from this side and then the outer piece also attached from the outside. So I think those would be relatively straightforward. They're basically tweaking the design in some way. Being able to split the outer mold will require some new features in the software, but I think I have an idea of how to do that. The last one is a little bit more fundamental, and that is being able to remove this inner mold from the plaster. So when the plaster sets, we're left with a situation like this, 
we're left with the rigid 3D print inside of the rigid plaster, and we need to somehow release them. This mold here, with a little bit of air and prying, I was able to wiggle it out, and it came out relatively easily. This one here was much more of a struggle. I eventually got it out without any problems, but it required a lot more finagling than I would like. I'm not too sure exactly what the difference. I'd actually think this one would be harder because the draft angles are way less. But it wound up being that this one was the tr tricky one. This one wound up being challenging as well. So these last two that I did. So this could be a design issue or it could be my process. Maybe I did something slightly different between the two. Either way, I wanna make this situation better so it's less likely to happen. Having inconsistent results is not what I'm going for. So I was thinking about this problem and how to get this inner mold out more easily. And I came up with potentially four different options. The first option is to change the 3D print itself just a little bit, and in particular to make it a little bit thinner. I haven't really tuned this at all. I went ahead and picked an arbitrary value, so it's relatively rigid. If I made it a little bit thinner, I get a couple advantages. One is it would print faster, which is great. Since I'm printing this on a high quality setting, it prints relatively slowly. And the idea behind it being thinner is that potentially it would flex more. So I could bend it a little bit more while it's embedded in the plaster and hopefully pull it out a little bit easier. Basically it would have a little bit more give to it. The PLA as it is, is quite rigid. The trade-off is I want this to be stiff enough to hold back the plaster. And I worry about it getting too thin. That's one option I may try but it seems kind of speculative and may or may not work. Next option is to split the inner mold. So with this option, the idea would be basically to say, cut this in half. We would temporarily attach it together, pour the plaster around it, and then hopefully we could take out one half at a time and that would be an easier process. However, I'm not quite sure that would work. We still have the problem of being able to pull this up vertically. What we'd really wanna do is somehow make it so it would shrink in diameter and I really don't know how to do that. Maybe there's a thin little wedge that gets sliced out and then pulled out that could then let this flex a little bit more and pull out. So there's kind of this design challenge of how I would do that. The other problem is it would introduce a seam. So there'd be a seam wherever this comes together. I would also need to figure out how to attach it so it didn't leak with the plaster. Yeah, it was still formed a relatively smooth surface. I have to do that from the inside. Right now, I've just been leaving the 3D supports in. They really don't matter, but I would need to somehow gain access here to be able to attach it together and detach it from the side. So that seems like an option, but I really don't know how it would work. Next option is to go with silicone, and this is used in a lot of mold making. So the idea here is instead of having the rigid plastic piece form the inside of the pot, you wind up making this out of silicone somehow. The silicone gets put in, and because the silicone is deformable, you can actually then bend the silicone and pull it out much easier. You could go ahead and make this whole thing out of silicone, but it's a lot of it silicone and very expensive. The other option is to make something that's relatively thin walled of silicone and then the rest out of plastic that's 3D printed. So this is one of my very early molds that I made. I did all this design work by hand, but it's basically the same thing. Only this isn't the part that forms the pot. So this is actually a mold that I use to pour the silicone. Then there's actually an inner mold as well. This is actually a replacement piece. The original went all the way down. So much like we're pouring plaster, we have an outer mold, an inner mold, and we pour silicone between these. We can then get rid of the plastic on the outside, leave the one on the inside, and then pour plaster around this. We can pop this piece out, the silicone's very bendy, and we can pull it out. When I designed that mold manually, it was kind of tricky. You are constantly thinking about positive and negative spaces, and you're thinking about the pot, the plaster, and now the silicone, and which face you want to keep, which one is the one that really matters because it's going to transfer into the pot, and which ones don't really matter. And there's a bunch of offsets that you need. You need the offset for the 3D print, and then you need the offset for the plaster, and now you're adding an offset for the silicone. The advantage is my software now can handle all these offsets pretty much automatically. That's basically what it's designed to do. It creates the offsets for the 3D prints needed and for the plaster right now. So this would be one more turtle deep. We would have another offset for the silicone and then another pair of offsets for a 3D printed mold for that. That's probably hard to visualize right now. I kind of sort of know how to do it. The real problem is, do I want to introduce silicone into my mold making process? Ideally, I'd like to be able to 3D print something and use it directly. Silicone is expensive and often one of the reasons it's used in other mold making is to be able to make many plaster copies of the same master. That isn't a high priority for me. If you actually want to make a lot of copies, let me know in the comments down below. 
Right now it's not a design goal for me, but if there are a lot of people that do want to make lots of copies, the silicone's probably a good option. And in that case, I might consider this option a little bit more. The last option is actually to go into multi-part molds. So the idea here is actually to split the whole plaster mold into pieces. So imagine we cut a line down the middle here. We could pour one half of the plaster and another half of the plaster and those would mate together. So they would then pull out. In doing so, there's not really this inside cavity that we have to try and extract a 3D print from. The 3D print would basically surround the outside of the plaster. That should make it a lot easier to pull out. For a one-part mold like this, it's not exactly ideal because we wind up adding a seam line into the pot. However, this is a process we're eventually going to need to tackle for multi-part molds. And that is something I'd like to eventually get to with this piece of software. That would let us handle more complex geometries. It would also let us get around the build volume problem I alluded to at the very beginning for the outside. By having a multi-part mold for the inside, we could also help get bigger pieces that way. However, there are some drawbacks. One was the seam I just mentioned. The other is getting the print pieces to align. 3D prints aren't exactly precise. It kind of depends upon how well tuned your printer is, but having a mating face here where the plaster needs to come together can be a little bit tricky. Even though it looks like they should be right, there are often failures where the 3D print winds up being warped slightly and therefore the plaster itself will not mate against itself. And again, we might have to deal with those in the future, but for these simple one part molds, it may be more than we want to handle. The other thing is I wind up now with a whole bunch more 3D printed pieces that need to be attached and detached. So right now I have these three pieces that need to be attached. We'd basically at least double that. So we'd half of the inner mold, we'd have this ring, we'd have half the outer mold, and we'd have the other side as well. Potentially we could reuse the mold and just cast it twice but we now have a lot more seams that we have the same problem where we need to be able to secure it well enough that the plaster doesn't leak, yet we need to be able to then unseal it so we can pull the plaster once it's cured back out. And then the other part is all the software to go ahead and do that automatically for us. It would defeat the purpose if I had to go and cut up my mold manually. I really want the software to do all this heavy lifting. So where do we go from here? Well, one feature I definitely know I want is to split this outer mold. That way I don't have to cut it off and I get around this build volume problem. So I'm going to have to address this kind of long vertical seam in the molds, both how to do that in the software and then how to attach it. And pretty much all of the options for the inner mold require a better attachment process as well. This ring has some issues that we need to address. And if we wind up splitting the mold in any way, we're going to have all these more seams that we need to deal with. So I think this issue of attaching and detaching and trying to create some system and set of materials that winds up creating this good joint is going to be on the critical path and something I need to deal with no matter what. So the other question I want you guys' feedback on. We have an option of going down and adding silicone into the process, basically doing these extra offsets so that we can create these one piece molds easier, or we can go ahead and split it into multiple pieces and have the seam line. So would you rather have silicone or would you rather have seam lines? It seems like this is a fundamental trade-off that we're gonna to have to face. And if you guys have an opinion, I would definitely like to know. So we're making good progress, but as always, there's more to do. I think in the next video, I'm gonna tackle this seam issue and see if I can come up with a solution that I like. By the way, I still have the link down in the description below if you wanna try out a beta version of the software. The end idea would be to create some sort of web app that does this. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, thanks.